All right, so here we are. This is uh, Adobe Bridge. And what I'm going to try to show you guys now is a little quick, kind of fun, kind of moving, happening slideshow inside Photoshop. So how do you do that? Well, we've got some images here now in a little folder inside Bridge. But I can notice just by looking at some of these guys that some are JPEGs and some are Photoshop documents. I got all kinds of different sizes of things here. So what I'd like to do is try to make them all the same size or pretty close to the same size so that it'll work together as a little bit of a slideshow. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to collect them all up, put them into a little folder, and make them about the same size. Now, if they're a little bit smaller than the size I want, I'm going to make them bigger. And if they're a little bit bigger, we're going to make them a little smaller. So what do I want to do here? I'm going to try to select all of them. Easiest way to do that, Command-A on a Mac, Control-A on a PC. Inside Bridge, there's a really cool little tool up here called the Image Processor. And it's inside Tools. Go down to Photoshop and come across to the image processor. Look at all the other goodies you got there. Oh my goodness, batch and contact sheet and all kinds of good stuff. But the image processor is the one we want. We're going to click on that. What it does is opens inside Photoshop because they're, it's going from Bridge to Photoshop to help us out. So what I need to do here is to make a place that this little bunch of files is going to rest when it's done. I could keep them in the same location, but... That's not going to work for me because I actually had them as a collection inside Bridge. What I'd like to do is put them someplace I can never forget where they are, which is the desktop. So I'm going to click on this, select the folder, and say select folder. Very good. And back this up and then come over to the left and just choose desktop. Click on it once. That opens up our little path there. And then way down in the bottom right, we have open. Click. That creates the path. That's where it's going. This little folder, when it's done, is going to end up on the desktop. So what I want to do is take all of those files, however big they were, and save them as JPEGs. And we could make them a little bit smaller. 12 is the biggest number, by the way. Let's make it half of that and say 6, just for the purposes of this demo. And then we're going to say resize to fit. Now, when I say resize to fit here, I've got images that are tall and some that are wide. What I want to do is I'm going to say 720 and 720. That's 720 pixels, tall or wide. So if it's taller, it'll fit. If it's wider, it'll fit. And then uh, this little processor here will kind of adjust either way to make sure the, the other size is right. This looks good to me. Now down the bottom, be careful. What I've got here is preferences. It says run action. Now this is very cool. We're not going to do it right now, but you could actually put in an action and I can convert all of these images to grayscale or I could do some other fun stuff. I'm going to turn that off. I don't want to do any of that stuff. Let's leave that include ICC profile on. That's basically a printing mechanism there. I'm going to say run. Now let's see what happens. It's going to open up these images. And what it does is it finds the images and says, yeah, okay, that was about this big, that was about that big. It kind of resizes. You can see some of the, the guidelines and things that folks have put in here. And it's going to resize them and say, yep, that fits, this fits, that's going to be this big, that's going to be that big. It's going to put them all together inside one little folder, and it's going to say JPEG. And then what I'm going to try to do is use that folder to help us to create a little slideshow that's going to have all of the different pictures that we had in that folder and it'll dissolve one to the next. You can see how they're getting a little bit smaller there in some cases. And what we'll try to do at the end here is maybe even add a little bit of music and we'll put a title in there, a title page or even an ending title page. And we could do that all inside Photoshop. Very cool stuff. So it's cooking right along here. We've got a couple of different versions of some pictures that folks have made in my uh, experimental photo class at the New Hampshire Institute of Art and some scanning art and all kinds of things. I think it's done now. I mean, we can see that it doesn't work anymore. It's not cooking around anymore. So I think we're good. So let's take a look. So we're going to minimize that for just a second and minimize bridge for a second. And we should see it on the desktop. There it is as a little folder that says JPEG. Excellent. So now let's go get it back through bridge. So on the left-hand side, I have my, uh, my dock riding on the left here. 
I'm going to hit bridge, and I'm going to go find that folder. Where's that folder? That folder should be on the desktop. Excellent. And what should it be named? It's called JPEG. Double click to open, please. And here we go. Excellent. So now I've got all these different images. Now what I probably want to do here is to move some of them around. I don't know why they didn't uh, stay in that same setup, but they didn't. So I'd like to click on this first one and drag this over here. So now I've got the drawing that goes to, well, let's put this one next. The drawing and the photo that become the, the final image. Excellent. And let's take a look around a couple things. Well, I've got this, this little uh, quilt that this young lady made. And her, here she is looking at it, and there's a close-up version of it. Let's put those all together. And the rest of the stuff, you know, we can move those around, but we'll say okay for now. Excellent. So here we are. Everything looks good. I'm going to click on the very first image one time, and then I'm just going to hit enter or return, or I could double click on it. And when I do that, it opens inside Photoshop, looking something like that. The next thing I want to do is I want to try and create a little video or a little timeline that's going to work here. So I go up to the word window on the top, and if you notice inside Photoshop, the word window has all of the different panels and options inside here that can help us to organize things that are happening inside Photoshop. So I'd like to come down in this little list and choose timeline. Now the timeline is going to give us a little create video timeline button at the bottom and I'd like to click on that and what it's going to do now is it's going to give me a little purple box here that's representing that very first image that we have selected there and it's got underneath it a little bit of an uh, audio track and we can put some music in there later so we've got this little purple box and that represents that image let's back up to show you here's the first image but now i need the rest of the images i need to put the rest of these things together to make a little slideshow where's the rest of the stuff well down the bottom here what we're going to do is going to ask this little guy, that little film strip, to get us some more media. We click on that and we say add media. So I click on that and we're going to choose from our list the group of images that we want. So I click on the word JPEG. Now on the left hand side here we are back where we're choosing what we want. Remember it was on the desktop and it was that little folder that said JPEG. Click on that please and here we go. Here's all the different images that we had. Now we know we already have one, and it really doesn't make any difference if we have all the rest of them. We can get rid of that one if it happens to come back in again. What I'd like to do here is grab all the rest of these pictures. There's one. Now I clicked on that once to select it. The rest of them I can Command A or Control A on a PC to select them all. Once I've got them all, I come down to the bottom. Oops, there we go. Come down to the bottom here. <laughs> clicked on that and I'm going to zoom down there and say open excellent so I click on open and what happens here is wait for it ah look at that all the rest of the little pictures showed up at the bottom one right after the other to show us that these are the other images in sequence that's kinda nice and they also stack up on the right hand side in the layers. Now I've got a little problem here. Check this out kids. I've got this little picture here that doesn't quite make it all the way across and this one doesn't quite make it across. How do I know that? Well just a quick look shows me that these checkerboards mean complete transparency. 100% transparent. That means this particular layer, this particular image is way off to the left and there's nothing over here. So let me just show you real quick how to straighten this out. I'm gonna back up just a bit to show you what's going on. Inside this little video group, which everything got tucked into this video group, kinda nice. I'm gonna click on the top one. So I clicked one time in that very top layer. I'm gonna scroll down. I use that little scroll bar there and scroll down and I'm gonna shift and click on the bottom one. Now they're all selected. Here's a really cool, easy way to fix everything, to make sure they're all centered. And I can put something together afterwards to make sure that all these pieces are kind of lined up. So what I'm going to do now, they're all centered, is I'm going to come up to the word select on the top. Now I could do this with the keyboard shortcut. 
and I love keyboard shortcuts once you get to know and love them you can use them all the time but there it is I want to select all in other words I want to grab the whole entire frame of all of the stuff here and I could do it with command a here on a Mac or control a on a PC and say select all and now what I get is look at it there it is the marching ants yes that's what they call them the marching ants and that means everything inside this frame is selected well I know that this first image fills the whole frame but some of those other ones did not to do this to make sure they fit come on over to the left hand side here and choose your move tool that's the top left top tool in the whole entire toolbar and once you've got it selected now you've got some options these are options for that tool this is called the options bar right here and what I want to do is I want to center this so you can see I've got centering it left and right up and down I want that puppy right there that's my winner click that one and that'll center it horizontally from the middle this guy will center it horizontally vertically excellent let's back it up click those two buttons and look what we got over here it found all of those other ones that weren't quite centered and it centered them left and right and up and down very cool all right, so we're going to stop there, and then we're going to come back with the next video and show you how we can move some transitions around, make this work so that it kind of flows very evenly, and then maybe put a background in and some music.